Saturday morning, the Experts Program kicks off. That means Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, is with us here on Power Talk. Hi, Luis. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Getting a little better. I've had a cold all this week. Just out of nowhere, an upper chest infection hit me. Man, it's been a tough one. It's really, really hung on, so not a lot of fun. And it came with nausea, too, which I'm not oh, too happy about. Yeah, that so, kind of sucks. Yeah, <laughs> so. and, the, and, the, and the only over-the-counter stuff I can use for it is uh, Dramamine. That actually does work. Take one of them a day, and it seems to hold it back. So fingers crossed that I'll be through it, you know, through the weekend here. Excellent. Yeah. Hey, we got an interesting story out of the register. It's about the Ukraine invasion. We've talked about how the Ukraine invasion could result in the so the uh, the Russians. I still call them Soviets. I mean, they basically, yeah. you know, Putin's got the si- same mindset as the yeah. Soviet <laughs> Union, right? Conquer and expand. But um, yeah, boy, it's like the old Cold War days for you, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah. Back yeah. to your Air Force days. But uh, what we've been hearing is that some of the uh, statecraft that Putin practices is um, asymmetrical warfare in the form of, you know, cyber attacks against nations all around the world and their systems. And we were saying that with this war coming, are the Russians going to basically unload everything, including the kitchen sink, on the rest of the world as a way of, you know, trying to get back at the rest of the world for the sanctions and the economic uh, hurt that's being caused to them right now over this invasion? We thought something would have started happening in the last couple weeks, but some IT experts are saying that this may be the quiet before the cyber storm. So what do you think about this and where are we on this? So this is something that a lot of our clients and and, uh, other people have asked me about saying like, you know, where is the cyber warfare that we were expecting when this all started? And the experts at first were a little baffled by, you know, why does it seem that actually cyber attacks have gone down rather than increasing? But it turns out initially that was caused because essentially Ukraine and Russia host a lot of these ransomware gangs that are state sponsored, they've been going after each other, you know, as part of the the war effort, you know, the Ukrainian factions are attacking the Russians, the Russians are attacking the the Ukrainian factions. So they've kind of been at war with each other. But as this thing drags on, more and more, we're concerned that Russia is going to become more desperate as their, you know, battlefield progress stalls or is reversed, and that then they will lash out using everything that they can. So we're taking this opportunity to continue to strengthen our protections uh, and add layers of security to, you know, things like websites. Denial of service attacks are one of the things that they've done a really good job at. And it doesn't sound like much, What? but if you think about it, if all of a sudden your, your internet service provider is attacked in such a way that it's not a physical attack, but it's a way to keep them from being able to keep the internet functioning, what would be the impact on you and your, you know, the inability to get to websites? The, not necessarily because Amazon or uh, Walmart is getting attacked, but because your ISP can't weather the, the de- denial of service attack. So those are the sorts of things we expect to see. And so we're, we're trying to create a more resilient network so that if those kind of attacks happen, the impact will be less. So we've been using the, you know, the last really four weeks to anticipate what kind of attacks are happening based on what's going on in the Ukraine and in Russia and trying to mitigate those. So I think we're going to be better prepared than we would have been otherwise. But we do think that these attacks are coming. It's just a matter of time. And what are you telling your clients right now to do? Well, the thing we're emphasizing is hypervigilance, right? About 85% of all breaches and incidents result from human error. People doing something that they shouldn't do, opening an email, clicking a link, you know, even putting in a USB drive that they got in the mail into their computer, which then infects the computer and bypasses all the protections that, that you put in place to protect infiltration from the internet. But hypervigilance is the most important thing that we emphasize to our clients and our and their employees. That, you know, make sure that you stay current on what's going on. We do a lot of cybersecurity training, and we've asked our clients to dust that off and, and have their employees go through it again as a reminder, a refresher, what the threats are and how they can detect them and, and, and uh, prevent them from happening. But then you also need the technical protections, the things that not only can create barriers to breaches, but also can detect them if they do happen. And because the most important thing that we do as a, as a cybersecurity company is we anticipate that there will be something that gets through. So it's just as important to be able to detect that. Just like in your home, locking your windows and locking your doors is important. But if you don't have an alarm system, if somebody breaks through the door, then you don't know about it until you come home and, and find that your stuff has been taken. So we need those kind of alarm systems in place that can alert us to things that are suspicious and unusual. And we're deploying those at, at an ever-increasing 
rate. Hey, one of the other things I, I noticed here is that there was some data wiping malware found in the Ukraine. Now, this sounds really serious. Data wiping malware, is that something that people would want to worry about that could end up in their system? Yeah, so that's the biggest threat that we're concerned about is pretty much cyber criminals do things in order to be able to get paid, right, to make money. But nation state like Russia, they get desperate enough. All they really want to do is cause disruption and, and chaos. So they may deploy tools that will wipe the data completely off of a computer, including the operating system, not because they, they hope to make profit on it, but because they want to cause chaos. And when those kind of tools get deployed, just like, you know, uh, mass bombings, there's no real way to, to recover from it unless you have really good backups. And, and that's one of the things that, that we're also working on is to make sure that our clients have good backups, not only in their offices, but also offsite someplace. And that those backups are, are air gap. That is that they're set up in such a way that they can't be affected by these kind of attacks directly. Because that's the first thing that the bad guys go for is they go for the backups to you know, destroy those so that then they know that there's no way for you to recover. And then you mentioned the fact that one of the reasons why some of the experts think that, that we haven't seen these outside attacks is that the Russians and the Ukrainians are busy launching attacks against each other, you know, in this asymmetrical warfare. But I would also think that with all the bombing that the Russians have done in Ukraine, I would imagine that probably some of that bombing has this random bombing that they're doing. They might have hit buildings that had servers that, you mm -hmm. know, black hat actors were working in, and those guys have had their, their physical systems wiped out, and that stopped them from being able to launch attacks, at least coming from the Ukraine. Yeah, no doubt there's been some of that. But what's interesting to me is how resilient the internet has been in the Ukraine. I mean, they're still being, you know, they're still able to post videos and, and post on social media. And you would you would have thought that if a physical war like this broke out, that'd be one of the first things that, that the enemy would take out is to cause, you know, radio, essentially a radio blackout. Uh, but they're still there and it's still working. That's Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, joining us today. Online, it's AlvarezTG.com. At AlvarezTG is the Twitter handle. And Luis, the toll-free number for the iTeam. Give us a call at 866-78-ITEAM. That's 866-784-8326. And by the way, folks, be sure to join us Monday morning for Lewis's expert segment. Starts in the 8 o'clock hour. We're going to talk about how Netflix is planning on cracking down on people who share their Netflix passwords with family members and friends and have, well, basically getting free Netflix in more than one location. We'll talk about that Monday morning here on Power Talk. Thank you, Lewis. You're welcome, Mark. Take care.